AJ Pay. AJ Pay. Hey, what is going on, YouTube? It's AJ Pay bringing you another Pokemon Wi Fi battle, a black and one battle against Shiny Psyduck. It's a UU match. It's a pretty damn good UU match, in my opinion, at least. Everything's always in my opinion. Just kidding. But, um, this week I'm going to be uploading all of my good black and white one battles just to get rid of all of them because I feel like they're rotting in my file and, you know, they're out of date and all, but. I need to get rid of them. I really want to narrate them as well. But yeah, I got a good one. Um, this team is kind of weird in a sense because what this team mainly is supposed to do is to have Quillfish set up the Toxic Spikes and then let uh, Roserade, my Scarf Roserade, Phantom Shock, everything. Only problem is this team has a Quillfish to suck up the Toxic Spikes, Bronze Song's not affected by it, and Zatu bounces it back. And then we have that chandelier in there as well. So Heracross can't go for choice. Banning Heracross uh, cl close combats. Really? What am I saying? I don't know. Let's just start the battle. As I'm uh, just going to lead off with the Snorlax. Thinking he might lead off with the chandelier. So I can pursue trap it. But he leads off with the Kukudile. So that's kind of a problem. So I'm going to have to switch out. I'm going to go into my cool fish. Get the intimidate drop. And be like, oh, I'm kind of immune to this thing. Oh, wait. No, wait a minute. Nope. I'm weak against Earthquake. It's super effective. But I can live on because that's minus one. I should be able to live with one. But no, I don't because of a crit. And he knocks out my fishy. So fishy's dead. Won't be able to set up toxic spikes. That's not good. The point of this team is to do that. But now it's over. I'm going to switch out to my hair across. Hey, strong to um, bluff the Choice Scarf as he switches Zatu in. I went for Earthquake because I thought Chandelier was going to come in and I forgot about the Zatu. Otherwise, I would have went for the Stone Edge if I remembered the Zatu existed. So stupid play on my part. He hits me with the Shy Shock as I switch into Mew. And the reason why there's Mew still in UU is because I took this match way before uh, Mew went up to OU. So I go for a nasty plot knowing this thing can't really do much to me if he decides to toxic me or status me, you know, I got the secret nice, so that's all good. I go for the aqua, not the aqua, or a spear, <laughs> what am I thinking? Predicting either Bronzong or Crocodile to come in, but you know, they don't come in, so um, I realize, you know, I could just go for a shadow ball thinking Bronzong might come in, so I might as well go for it as he does come in. I go for the shadow ball and I get a defense drop on this thing so that's very cool and also I know this thing can't really do much to me as well besides toxic me but then again synchronized would happen but at the same time he can't be synchronized with poison because he's part steel and immune to that so I gotta keep that in the back of my mind but you know I don't really care I go for a nasty plot and he goes for a dry ball actually does a lot so now I'm at plus four and I'm like okay that's doing way too much for a dry ball I'm gonna have to take him out now so I go for a plus four dry ball with his minus one special defense gonna take out Taco Bell because Taco Bell sucks and um yeah down goes the Bronzong you know I don't think that plus one uh, minus one really mattered but whatever now he's got me pursuit trapped and I realized that I was just like crap I might as well just stay in predicting the pursuit but he goes for a crunch and I face palming here because I could have switched out and went through something else and had a mute for later I'm just like damn it but go back to hella strong because I am bluffing the Choice Scarf once again, and this time I do resist the Crunch, so he might as well just fear that. And I go for the Mega Horde because it's super effective against the Kukadel, uh, neutral against the Zatu, and it hits the Chandelure as well, so just in case the Chandelure comes in. But now Chandelure comes in, I'm just like, oh no, I'm fear this thing. I'm gonna go to Snorlax because Snorlax can take hits, even though this is my offensive one. A thick fat should, the thick fat ability should be able to take this Fire Blast pretty well. It doesn't. I take it's more than half and I'm just like this thing is probably most likely specs and then it's gonna two hit KO me and take out the Snorlax you never really see a Chandler take out a Snorlax but you know what there you go it just took one out so gonna switch into my special defensive Umbreon and this is the curse set which no one ever runs which is very underrated because I swept plenty of teams with it I'll probably upload one eventually maybe possibly don't know but he goes for a try attacks you know if he gets the um, status on me that's fine because then I'll synchronize it and I also do carry the heal bell as well so it doesn't really matter to me whatsoever as he does get the burn and he was typing to chat that he was hoping I didn't have heal bell and then um, I believe this turn right here I do show him that I have the heal bell I think I'm way too ahead of myself oh yeah heal bell there and he's like no why do you have heal bell and then I'm, he's pop and then later I'm gonna show him right now that I have the moonlight as well to heal up and he's like no I was hoping you'd haven't had the moonlight just like yeah surprising you giving you the unexpected stuff as he's gonna switch his Quillfish in to get the minus one on me and you know be all defensive and stuff. It's like I knew you were gonna switch out to this, but you know that's fine. You can't do anything to me because I'm gonna curse up some more. But 
I remember during the game, these seeds can carry haze, but I'm like, ah, I highly doubt he has it. No one really carries haze on a quillfish anymore, so whatever. I'm gonna let him do it. But he has the haze, and I'm just like, no, you surprised me too. So we're kind of even in the surprise factor since, as I go for a payback, it does actually a decent amount. Uh, surprisingly enough, even though this quillfish is kind of defensive, I think quillfish is only defensive towards fighting moves. That's really what quillfish is really there for, and to set up these stupid spikes. And I'm just like, no, you gotta stop setting up those spikes. That is not good at all. So at this point, I have to switch out now. Um, I believe. Oh, I don't have to switch out, but he's usually he's using me as setup fodder. But he realizes at this point he's taking too much damage and he needs a quillfish for possibly later. As he switched into the Porygon 2, as I pull a double switch predicting this switch into Porygon 2. So, you know, I got my prediction cap on even though I've been over predicting a bit too much. But the over predicting will help me out later. That's, except not right here as I go for the stone. I think his chandelier is going to come in to be all immune to the close combat and let me be locked into it. Because I don't want that to be running rampant on my team. And that Porygon 2 takes it like a champ, recovers, and I'm face palming here because this stupid ducky is supposed to be dead from a close combat. But I over predicted and went for stone it. So damn me. But I'm um, going to go back into my Umbreon now. Because I can set up curses all I, w all, all I want on this thing. I can start cursing up saying the F word, the S word, the M word, the F word. All those kind of words and stuff. I probably said the F word plenty of times. But he goes for another recovery. He's back up the full. I'm just like, well, crap. I'm going to switch out to my hair cross now. Because I do threaten this thing with um, choice bandit stuff. Choice bandit fighting moves. But he predicts this switch. It goes into the quillfish and gets the um, intimidate drop on me. And I don't think from this range with a minus one on me. I can't take it out with the close combat, and I could go for an Earthquake here as well, which is what I'm going to do, but he predicts that perfectly and goes into this Porygon 2 again. And this Porygon 2 and Quillfish Core is really kicking my ass, and then he has that Chandler sitting in the back where I can't even go for the fighting moves because he can be all immune to it, and it's like, well, crap, maybe he'll predict my switch and go double switch into Quillfish now, that's why I stayed and went for Earthquake. Nope, he's just gonna go for a recover. I'm just like, alright, well, he's kinda at the point where, like, he's at a good amount of health, so maybe he'll predict my double switch now. So I'm gonna go for an Earthquake again and stay in, but he stays in, and you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna recover. Kinda dangerous to me because he could've just finished me off with a special attacking move by then, but he decides just to get up to full, I guess. I guess that was his main priority. I don't really know. But now that he's almost at the full, I'm like, okay, he's probably most likely gonna attack me now, so I might as well switch back out to my umbrella. Umbreon, but he goes for an Ice Beam, I think predicting my Roserade to come in, but um, kind of stupid play on his part. Well, not really stupid, but I would've, personally, I would've went for that try attack to get as much damage as I can on anything. He's gonna switch back out to this Quillfish, you know, and he's gonna get the Intimidate drop, but I'm gonna go for the payback. And he, at this point, I think he realizes, you know, I'm taking him down to the range where a close, a Choice Bandit Close Combat will take out the Quillfish, so... He's in bit of a predicament now, switching these things in and out every time. And if I had those stealth rocks or spikes from my other, from my quillfish, these pokes probably would have been dead by now, besides this Porygon because it has recovered. But now I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go into my Roserade because I'm trying to bait out the Chandelier because I need to kill that Chandelier so that way I can go for close combat. Now, my Roserade's choice Scarf. Faster and everything. So I'm trying to get this Chandelier switch in and I'm going to go for the Sleep Powder. And luckily the Chandelier switches in, I get Sleep Powder in, I hit it, it's asleep. I'm just like, yes, I can take this thing out now possibly, but I'm locked in Sleep Powder. Kind of dangerous just for me to go for Sleep Powder though on a Porygon 2 when it was in because one, if he decided to stay with Porygon 2, Sleep Powder wouldn't work because it was burned. And then two, I'm locked in Sleep Powder so then I would have to switch out. Now I switch out to Umbreon hoping that he'd be asleep still when I switch in. He's asleep, cool. He gets a second turn sleep and I'm just like, very cool. So I'm going to go for a payback. I'm going to take this thing out. And then now I can go for close combat. It's like, yes, but nope. It's it's still alive. I thought Shadler has frail defenses, but then again, Umbreon doesn't have the best attack unless if I'm boosted up with curses. But I'm going to go for another payback as he gets a third turn sleep. This is the first time I ever got a third turn sleep on somebody and that's going to take out the Shadler. And now I am free to go for those choice banded close combat on anything I want and at this point this cool fish is gonna get the intimidate drop on this umbreon which is perfect because now my hair cross when I switch it it won't get intimidate drop and it's at that point of health where a choice banded close combat will definitely take out the cool fish as he goes for his spikes um kind of does that actually does 
matter in this game because he could have went for the waterfall and that waterfall would have helped him a lot as you see soon in the game as I do take him out with a close combat but now I'm at minus one attack and I mean not minus one defenses in general so Kuka Dao is going to come in and he's choice scarf and all and at this point I believe this is where he finds out that I'm not choice scarf I'm not sure if he knew I was choice scarf until up to this point I don't know but this is where he finds out I'm not choice scarf that's why he switched Kuka Dao in now gonna take it out with close combat and live with 20 and if we went for that close I mean that waterfall earlier when I switched Heracross in this Heracross would have been dead and he would have won the game that's one way he could have won the game another way he could have won the game was switching Porygon to before this Kuka dial in, get me to minus two defense and then take me out with the earthquake and outspeed everything and moxie boost stuff and then win the game and sweep me with that Kuka dial. But that's not gonna happen as I'm gonna go for the close combat on the Porygon 2, which is his final poke. Gonna take him out. And that's gonna be a narrow 3 0 victory on my part. And that was a very good game, Shiny Psyduck. He did, you had um, two chances of winning, but unfortunately, it, he didn't choose those ways of winning but regardless still a good game this was supposed to be a pokemon uh pokemon pit beta video a long time ago but then i got really lazy and decided not to because the narration was too long but now i decided you know i might as well just do them and yeah so pokemon randomizer nuzlocke thing was supposed to be up yesterday sunday but i realized you know i meant to say tuesday on that last video not sunday tuesday so it'll definitely be out tomorrow I promise you guys, it will be out tomorrow. I have not given up on that. I definitely love recording and playing it. And don't forget to check out Shiny Psyduck's channel. He has good stuff. He's a good battler. His channel link will be in the description below. So check him out. I subscribed to him as well. So, you know, that maybe tells you a lot as well. But anyways, that about does it for me. So like if you like, comment if you like, and subscribe if you like. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.